Okay, welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at everything to do with binomial expansion. Now all the topics you can see on the screen are the ones that we're going to look at throughout this video and just so you know how to use it, let's just have a look at that now. So if you've used this video before, you will know that you can click into the description and have a look at all of the other chapter videos for each of the topics. And if you scroll down, you will also find the video there where I go over everything in the AS Pure curriculum. If you also click on the video, you can see that all of the chapters are bookmarked, so you can click on them and you can scroll through the video and have a look at the individual topics in the chapter. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so when we're looking at binomial expansion, essentially, if we're thinking about from GCSE level where we've looked at expanding and simplifying a triple bracket, we're going to look at sort of how this all sort of interlinks with then higher powers when we have sort of a, a bracket to the power of 5 or to the power of 8 and how we go about finding those powers using this process. Now, when it comes to binomial expansion, it's all sort of interlinked with... Um, sort of the, the, the separate powers when we've looked at brackets. Now if we think about sort of a nice easy one, something like uh, x plus 5 in brackets squared, we get a certain pattern that sort of uh, comes out of these. And when we expand one of these, we get the x squared. We get that first piece there as always to that power of 2. Then we get the 2 in the middle. We get plus 5x plus 5x. And we always get these 2 there. And then you get that 5 at the end, which is squared as well to make 25. And then obviously those two in the middle are added together, but we get this sort of little pattern and it's all linked to Pascal's triangle. And Pascal's triangle is nice and easy to draw. We get a one at the top, then you add together uh, the numbers either side of it to get the ones below. And obviously one at the top's got a zero either side, so we just have one and one below that. But then when we add these together, we get one on the left. Those two ones add to make two in the middle, and then we get one on the end. And we can just keep following this process and making this pattern. So always one on the outside. Then the one and two above this next one makes three. Two and one makes three and one. And we can keep on going. One, three and one makes four. Three and three makes six. Three and one makes four again. And then one at the end. And we can keep on going basically with this. Now when it comes to this double bracket that I've drawn here, that is this row here. So one, two, one. So we get one of the pieces at the start, the x squared. We get the two pieces in the middle, okay, which we've obviously just shown there. We get the two in the middle, and then we get the one at the end, and following that little pattern of one, two, one. Now if I come away from that and we have a look at this triple bracket, which is what we're gonna have a look at to start with, that is obviously linked to the next row down. Now that next row down is one, three, three, one. Now it's not as easy to spot the pattern with this one, um, but obviously if we were to expand this all and have a look at all the pieces, we would see we get the one at the start, we always get an X cubed at the start. We get the one number at the end, which is gonna be that three cubed, which we'll have a look in a sec. And we get these two lots of the three pieces in the middle. And we're gonna have a look at those now. So if we have a little think, when we were to expand this at GCSE, obviously what we would do is we'd expand two brackets to start with. So we'd do x plus 3, and we're going to fully expand this. I'm going to do it nice and quick, though. And x plus 3, we'd expand that, which gives us x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then we expand that by another x plus 3. There we go. And we do that, and we expand this all out. We get the x squared times x gives us x cubed. The x squared times the 3 gives us 3x squared. And then we go on to the 6x, and we just keep following this process. So 6x times x is 6x squared. The 6x times the 3 is 18x. 9 times x is 9x. And 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, and we simplify this all down. So eventually we get x cubed plus, and we've got those two lots of the x squared there, which gives us 9x squared. The 18x and 9x gives us 27x. There we go, plus the 27. And we end up with these four pieces here. And as you can see in that line, we've got those four pieces. Now it's not quite as clear with the triple bracket here or with the uh, bracket to the power of three as to how we got those two lots of three in the middle. But essentially we kind of got, and let's have a look, we got the x squared here, one, two, three pieces of x squared. And we also got three pieces of x. We've got the 18x, the 9x, the 6x. And then obviously we've got the numbers on either end as well. We've got the x cubed 
and the 27. So you can kind of see where this pattern comes from. You've got the one lot of the X cubed, the one lot of the number at the end, and then the three of each piece coming on uh, coming in the middle there. Obviously, eventually we got to X cubed plus nine X squared plus 27 X plus 27, but we're gonna have a look at how we can actually get to that using binomial expansion and using this process uh, within Pascal's triangle. Now, obviously, um, we don't want to have to always draw this triangle out every time and thankfully there's a nice little button that we can use to get that on the calculator. And if you have your calculator, this is a calculator topic, it's a button that looks like this and it tends to be that you've got to press shift to get there first, but it says NCR. It's normally behind the divide button, so you still normally have to press shift divide and it gives you this uh, NCR. Now in order to get these numbers here, which was what we're going to use for the first one, we have to press, uh, obviously it's a power of three, so we press three, shift that NCR button, and you'll get a C, and then we press zero for the first one, so three C zero, and that always gives us a value of one. We always get that one for the first one, which is just there. Now for the next one, we press three again, three C one, and we get three C one, and that gives us three, then we do it again, so swap the one, but I go for two this time, so three C two, and that gives us, let's just have a look, we get three again, and then for the last one, we're gonna do three C three, which gives us one. So make sure you know what that, that button is in your calculator, it's normally just behind the divide. So three, shift NCR, and then whatever number we're looking for, we start with zero, and then one, two, three for those next ones. So we can actually find out what the pattern's gonna be just using this button on our calculator. I'm gonna be using that throughout the video, so this is gonna be a very important little button. I'm gonna be using that every question and, and mentioning that as we go. But as I said, you've gotta press shift first to get there. So let's have a look at how we can actually use that on this question, uh, making sure that we can obviously expand this triple bracket using binomial expansion before we start looking at higher powers. So if we get rid of this, obviously we can get rid of all of this. We know what answer we're trying to get to, and that's this one here, x cubed plus nine x squared plus 27x plus 27. Okay, so we obviously know that from GCSE level that that's gonna be the answer. And let's look at using binomial expansion to get there. So once we've got the pattern then, and we've got NC zero is one, and we've got one, three, three, and one, and that's gonna be our pattern. Now all we do is we look at the two pieces within, within our bracket. So we have an X as the first one, and a three as the second one. Okay, and let's just actually just highlight that in different colors. We've got an X and we have a three. So that first piece, um, that one there, the X, is obviously the first piece in our pattern, and we have one of those. So we have one lot of, and that's gonna be X, and everything here is gonna to have to be up to a power of three, so that's gonna be X to the power of three, and we have one of those. So all of these little pieces we're gonna write now, we need to make sure there's always a power of three in all of them. Now the next one, we're gonna have three lots of this next piece, so we're gonna to add to that three lots of, and the next piece is ever so slightly different. Now X, the first one, we're gonna drop down that power now, because we only have one of those X cubes in there. So that X piece is now gonna go down to a power of two. So one X to the power of two. But we need to make sure we balance out these powers, and the next piece that we're gonna throw in there is that three. So we have then a three, and that's gonna to be to the power of one. Not that we need to write the power of one there. Okay, so all we're gonna do is reduce that first piece, which in this case is X, so that's gone down to a power of two, and introduce that next piece in the bracket, which is a three. And we're just gonna swap these round now, so the X is gonna keep reducing, and that number, the three, is gonna keep going up in powers until we get to a power of three for that one as well. So the next one, and again, we've got three lots of this next piece. So we're gonna to add to that three lots of and we have x to the power of one this time, that's going down to the power of one, and that three is gonna go up to a power of two. There we go, and that's our third piece in that pattern done. And then onto the last piece, we have one of these, so we're gonna to add to this one of, now x is gonna go down to the power of zero, so that's gone, and we just have this three at the end, which again has to balance out to that power of three, so one lot of three cubed. And if we expand these all out and see what we get, one lot of x cubed is x cubed, there we go. Then we're gonna have three lots of x squared times three. Well, let's just do the three times the three to start with, which is nine. So that's nine lots of, and then we've got x squared with that, so nine lots of x squared. Then for the next piece, let's have a look. We've got three lots of three squared. Three squared is nine, three times three squared. So three times nine is 27. Again, with that x to the power of one, so tw plus 27x. And then at the end there, we have one lot of three cubed. Three cubed is 27. 
so plus 27 at the end. And there we go, that ma matches obviously what we've got from expanding our triple bracket at the top. We've got x cubed plus 9x squared plus 27x plus 27. So that's all we're going to do for binomial expansion. Obviously it gets a little bit more complicated as we start to go further down Pascal's triangle and start to get larger numbers involved. But basically that's all we're going to do. We're just going to write down what the, what the numbers are in obviously in that line of Pascal's triangle that we're going to be looking at. And obviously just balancing that out uh, with our powers sort of moving through. But let's have a look at another one and see how we can apply this to a slightly harder question. Okay, so this question says, find the first four terms in ascending power of x of the binomial expansion of 3 minus a third x to the power of 5, giving each term its simplest form. So let's have a look at this one. Now we've got a power of 5, so before we start dealing with the fractions and having a look at how we're going to deal with that, we'll find the first four terms in the pattern here. So we'll go for 5c0, 5c1, 5c2 and 5c3 and just work out what that pattern actually is. Now obviously we know the first one's one, so we go for 5c1, which is five. The next one, 5c2, is 10. And the next one, 5c3, is also 10. There we go. So that's how many lots of this pattern we're gonna have. Now this time, the first piece in our pattern is a three, that's okay. And the second piece in our pattern is negative a third x. Now obviously that's okay as well, but we're just gonna have to be careful when we're typing this into the calculator. Another way that you could write this here is you could write negative x over three. So you could leave it as that as well. I might actually write it as negative x over three instead, just to sort of um, make the terms a little bit easier to write. But let's go for this then. So we have one lot of the first piece, which is three, to the power of five. Obviously we've only got three more to do now. And we're gonna to add to that, we've got five lots of for the next piece. Let's just highlight these as we go. So now we're on this five lots. So we've got five lots of, and we have three to the power of four. And then we've got this negative x over three as well. So negative x over three. There we go. On to the next piece. Again, so we have 10 lots of this one. So we've got 10 lots of, so we've got 10 lots of, and we've got three getting down to the power of three, and then we've got this negative x over three, which is now being squared, and there we go. And then for our last piece here, again, we've got 10 lots of this. So we have 10 lots of three, again, I'm going down to a power of two, and we've got the negative x over three, which is now gonna be cubed. Right, so let's deal with all these pieces. The first one's okay, we've got three to the power of five. We can work that out nice and easy. That's 243. So we have 243 as our first one. You can always tick these off as you go, so that's done. The next one, five times three to the power of four. Well, let's work that out to start with. That's 405, so 405. And that's gonna be multiplied by negative x over three. We'll come back to that and deal with that in a sec. On to the next one. So we have 10 lots of, so 10 lots of three cubed. So we have three cubed, which is obviously 27, times that by 10 is 270. So we have plus 270 lots of, and let's have a look, negative x over three. Well, if we square that, it's gonna become positive. So we're gonna get x squared on the top, and on the bottom, three squared is nine, so x squared over nine. There we go, and that's that piece dealt with. And on to the next one, obviously just being careful with those when you're squaring that, remembering that that's gonna make it positive. So we get the x squared on the top, positive x squared, nine on the bottom. On to the next one, 10 times three squared is 90. So we've got 90, and that's gonna be, and we've got negative x over three cubed. So when we cubed, it's gonna stay negative. So we're gonna have negative x cubed on the top, and three cubed, which is 27 on the bottom. There we go, and that's, last, that's the last piece dealt with. Right now, simplifying all of this then. So we've got 243 at the start, that's all good. And then we've just got to be careful on this next bit. Now negative x over three, just obviously we've got, we could have had the negative a third there. We basically just want to do a third of 405. So if we do a third of 405, we have 405 divided by three is 135. And obviously it's negative there. So it's going to be negative 135 x. There we go. On to the next piece, we have nine on the bottom there, so we want to divide that 270 by nine. Obviously it's positive this time, so we'll divide that by nine. 270 divided by nine is 30, so we get 30 x squared. On to the next piece, 90 divided by 27 is not as nice, it gives us a fraction here, and gotta be careful because it's negative. So that's not gonna be plus there, it's gonna be minus. So we get minus 10 over three, which is what 90 divided by 27 comes out as, with an x cubed, 
there we go and that is those four first four terms finished so obviously just be careful on this because obviously sometimes you can get these fractional uh, pieces or these fractional coefficients here and that is quite common on these questions so you just need to be nice and careful and obviously just watching out for any pieces here that are negative like the two there just making sure that you show those with your negatives here as well when you do have these fractions involved just remember obviously you're just finding a fraction of that coefficient there again it's just like 405 multiplied by negative a third uh, in terms of actually getting these coefficients so here we've got the, the 135 a third of that and one ninth of 270 give us the 30 obviously our fractional piece at the end as well there so just being careful well, there's the first four terms in ascending powers of x and we've simplified each term. Okay, so this question says find the first three terms in ascending power of x of the binomial expansion of 1 plus px to the power of 10. It says where p is a non-zero constant and give each term in its simplest form. So obviously p is an actual number that we're going to find. Uh, and obviously it hasn't asked us to find that yet, it's just asking us to find those first three terms. In the next part of the process though, or the next part of the question, it says given that in the expansion the coefficient of x squared is nine times the coefficient of x, find the value of p. So we're going to find that value of p uh, you know, later on in the question. And then it says hence write down the coefficient of x squared and we're just going to follow this step by step and have a look at how to approach this and then you've got one to have a go at. So finding the first three terms then, we've got a power of 10 and just bearing in mind our first piece is a 1 which is always nice and our second piece is this plus px. So as we've got a power of 10 we need to do 10c0 to start with. So we've got 10c0 which is 1. We're only finding the first three terms so we've got 1. 10c1 is 10 and then we have 10c2 which is 45. There we go. So that's how many lots of each we're going to have on this part, particular one here. So for this one then, we've got one lot of, and then that's one to the power of 10, the first piece. And we're going to add to that, we've got 10 lots of, and it's now one to the power of nine, and then px as our second piece. And then for the final one, we have 45 lots of, one to the power of eight, and then px to the power of two. There we go. Right, so if we simplify this down then, 1 to the power of 10 gives us 1 for our first piece. 10 times 1 and then times the px gives us 10px. So we have 10px for the second piece. And then for our final piece there, 45 times 1 is 45. And px in brackets squared squares both of those letters, so we get p squared x squared. There we go, squaring both of those letters. So 1 plus 10px plus 45p squared x squared. And there's our first three terms in ascending powers of x. Now it says given that in this expansion the coefficient of x squared is nine times the coefficient of x. Well the coefficient of x squared, let's have a look and let's highlight that, is 45p squared, that's what's in front of the x squared, and the coefficient of x is 10p. So what it's saying is, okay, if one is nine times the other, it's saying if we multiply this coefficient here by nine, it would be equal to this coefficient here. Or in other words, nine, times 10p is going to be equal to 45p squared. Or you could do it the other way around. We could do 10p is equal to 45p squared divided by 9. Completely up to you which one you do. Obviously 45 nicely divides by 9, so that would be quite a nice way to do it. But I'm just going to follow this process as I've written it down this way now. It doesn't really matter which way. It's probably easier actually to divide it by 9, because I think we're going to divide it by 9 anyway in a sec. But let's have a look. So if we times that by 9 anyway, we get 90p equals 45p squared and then we just need to solve that as an equation so dividing both sides by p would obviously remove the p from the one side so we'd get 90 equals 45p just dividing both sides by p there then we could divide both sides by 9 or we could actually divide both sides by 15 completely up to you or we could just divide both sides by 45 and that would tell us what p is so if I divide both sides by 45 just write that down divide by 45 as we've got 45p there, we get 2 equals p, or p equals 2. And there we go, there's our answer for that part, so p equals 2 or 2 equals p. Then it says hence write down the coefficient of x squared, well the coefficient of x squared is 45p squared, there we go, and we now know that p is 2, so that's 45 multiplied by 2 squared, which is 45 times 4, and 45 times 4 is 180. And there we go, there's our coefficient of x squared, 180. Right, there we go. So, 
there's our final answer. So in terms of actually what we did there, obviously we had a different piece uh, within our bracket. We had a PX, I'm just being careful with that. I think the point the way you need to be careful with it is obviously this bit here where we get the P squared, X squared. I think other than that, the rest of it was quite nice and simple. Uh, and then obviously just reading the wording carefully, it said one coefficient was nine times the other. So obviously multiplying that by nine or dividing the other one by no, uh, nine there gave us a little equation to solve. We got our value of P and then sub that in to find the coefficient of X squared. Okay, so when having a look at binomial estimations, we can have questions like this. So it says, find the first four terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of, and then we have 1 minus x over 4 to the power of 10. And use your expansion to estimate the value of 0 0.975, again to the power of 10, giving your answer three decimal places. So the first thing we want to do is do our binomial expansion. So for a power of 10, we'll want to use 10c1, which is equal to 1, we're going to want to use 10c2, which is equal to 10, 10c3, which is equal to 45, and then 10c4 for our fourth, which is equal to 120. So putting this into our binomial expansion, our first piece is 1, so we have 1 to the power of 10. Our next piece we're going to have plus 10 lots of, and then we're going to have 1 to the power of 9 plus Oh, no, sorry, multiplied by negative x over 4, and that is to the power of 1. We're now going to move on to our next piece, so plus 45 lots of, 1 drops down to a power of 8, and our negative x over 4 jumps up to a power of 2. And then for our final piece, and it's quite a large question, so let's just try and move some of this out of the way so that we've got enough space there. And for our final piece then, we're gonna have 120 lots of, one to the power of down to seven, and negative x over four is gonna to go to the power of three. So we just need to simplify all of this. One to the power of 10 at the start is going to stay as one. Then we have 10 times one times the negative one on the top there, so that would be 10 over four and that is going to come out as 2.5 so it's going to be negative as it is and let's just highlight that the negative x over 4 so rather than being a plus we're going to have a minus so that would be minus 2.5 and again you can just type that into your calculator but minus 2.5 x for the next piece we have got 45 times 1 times the negative and obviously we need to expand that bracket as well so negative x over 4 squared would come out as x squared over and we can just write this to the side x squared over 16 so we're going to divide by 16 so 45 divided by 16 and if we type that into our calculator it gives us plus 2.8125 so 2.8125 and that's going to be x squared and then on to our final piece x uh, minus x over 4 cubed is going to be negative and we're going to have x cubed over 4 cubed which is 64. So we're going to be dividing by 64 on this piece and it's a negative x cubed at the end there so it's going to be a minus 120 times 1 and then divided by the 64 gives us negative 1.875 and that is x cubed, and we're only finding the four, first four terms here, but it does continue, so we'll put that it continues there. So that is our binomial expansion, and now we need to go about solving this estimation. So it says in the question here, use your expansion to estimate the value of 0.975 to the power of 10, which matches what's in here. So what we want is that piece in the bracket, the 1 minus x over 4, to be equal to 0.975. So if we set them equal to each other to start with to find out our value of x, and then we can actually sub that into our binomial expansion. So if we set them equal to each other, we get 1 minus x over 4, which has to be equal to, as stated in the question, 0.975. And we just need to go about solving that and you can do that in two ways we could add the x over 4 to the other side and then subtract the 0.975 from 1 and that leaves us with x over 4 which would be equal to 0.025 again multiplying that by 4 then we would get a value of x which comes out as 0 0.1 so x is 0 0.1 we can now use that to substitute it back into our binomial expansion. 
So you can write this down, you can write down substitute x equals 0.1 into the expansion, but if we just go about substituting that in, we've got one at the start, and again you could write sub x equals 0.1, but one minus 0.1 times 2.5 comes out as 0.25, and sub it into the next part, so 0 0.1 subbed into x squared gives you 0 0.01, and then we need to um, obviously multiply that by 2.8125, and that comes out as 0 0.028125, and then we've got our last piece there, and again you just type in these all into a calculator, take away, 1.875 multiplied by 0 0.1 cubed, and that comes out as 0 0.00, zero just reading it off the calculator, 1875. There we go. And if we simplify all of that, uh, again, just typing it all into the calculator, it comes out as 0 0.776, there's quite a lot of decimals here, 0.776, to five that comes out as I've just typed in the 0 0.975 to the power of 10 which is a lot the more decimals so when we sub that into our binomial expansion we get 0 0.77625 now the question here says giving your answer to three decimal places so if we type in 0 0.975 to the power of 10 into our calculator that gives us the answer and that's where I've got all my decimals from it comes out as 0 0.77625 6329, there we go, there are more decimals there, but I'm gonna stop there because it only wants it to three decimal places. So if we look at these two decimals, you can see 0 0.776 on the top one and 0 0.776 on the bottom one, and we've got a matching uh, amount of decimal places there, so they round to the same number. So we would give our answer as 0 0.776 to three decimal places. And we've not got much space to write that down, but if we, just put it over here to the side, we would just write 0 0.776 and just put that that is two three decimal places. And there we go, that would be our final answer for using estimation with binomial expansions. Okay, so that's the end of looking at binomial expansion. Hopefully that was useful and helpful. If it was, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you for the next one.